My name is Ivan de Mesmaker. I'm the Secretary General of the European Corporate Security Association, EXA. EXA is a non-for-profit organization that was established in uh, 2005 after discussions that we had with, uh, the, with Europol, with Eurojust and with other uh, main actors in security within the European Union. Uh, we now have over 300 uh, corporate members and our main objectives is uh, to offer a trusted forum uh, for discussion of uh, issues of mutual interest and for the exchange of expertise. And on the other hand, uh, one of our main objectives is to stimulate public-private cooperation. A little bit more than uh, six years ago, we started with uh, the high studies, police, justice and corporate security. Because from the corporate security side, we saw that police and justice uh, were not always aware of what was going on in corporations, in large organizations. That's why we set up those high studies. And each year now, uh, we take about 20 people uh, coming from local police, federal police, from intelligence services, from customs and excises, from uh, financial intelligence uh, units, from the military, from state security. We bring them together, we go to a corporation or an organization, we just have a look on what is done in that organization and then what are the security issues that they are dealing with and how public-private uh, cooperation can work. The threat environment has significantly changed. Uh, and that means we now are confronted to incidents that we never had before, like uh, lone wolves, uh, pack wolves, like they call it. But also, to me, the most important development is the empowerment of the individual due to technology. An individual today has at its disposal, for example, the possibility to conduct cyber attacks with a huge impact, has uh, firearms, has explosives, and in the very extreme, could even have uh, biological weapons that have the capability to almost extinguish life on Earth. Uh, you need to understand that even our special forces uh, are trained to interact with the criminal environment where people still have a sense of rational. Uh, once that they are overwhelmed, uh, they will stop, they will surrender. Here, uh, these people are confronted, so our police uh, special intervention teams are confronted with people who really go to the finish, uh, have no limits in, in, in what they do, and that really asks for a, a change of mentality. From one minute to another, we can come from a very comfortable situation uh, where people are friendly, where we are just in a routine, to a situation like Charlie Hebdo, where people shoot at you, and uh, where in a fraction of a second uh, your colleague is lying dead uh, close to you and you have to react. In fact, with security, we are preparing for the 0.001% uh, of probability, but with an extremely high impact. Uh, but our day-to-day uh, what, what we are doing in, on a day-to-day -day basis is just low intensity checking, etc. The only way uh, to keep people sharp is uh, to do uh, testing and exercises. So each day, guards, security people know something will happen because they will be tested. And that makes them very sharp when the real thing uh, happens. The testing also gives you the additional uh, advantage uh, that you also see uh, the flaws in uh, the security. And so you have a continuous improvement uh, by the people who test, who see flaws, and on the other side of our security guards, our security people, they are constantly uh, aware that something not might happen, but will happen. What we see is that the, these new developments in threats really require not only our classical police and intelligence services to react to these threats, but that we need civil society to play an active role in trying to mitigate uh, these threats. If we look, for example, at uh, an active killer scenario, an active killer scenario is finished within 10 minutes. Uh, even if police are very efficient and can be on location within 10 to 15 minutes, uh, the incident is finished. The first line uh, of defense is, all, is always awareness. So looking at uh, what happens 
reporting. If you see something, say something, and say something as quickly as possible. Uh, that is on the alert side, on the awareness uh, side. On the other side, we will also have uh, people that must be able to respond, really. And I'm thinking, for example, on, about off-duty police officers uh, who could be armed and who could be capable of responding to certain incidents. But there may also be uh, other people in society who can handle uh, weapons safely and in a responsible uh, way. And they could also contribute to have a response in case uh, of need. So we have really the two elements, that is awareness and also response. Societal security is extremely important. Um, the threat environment is changing. We have to adapt to that. And the only way in which we can keep our way of living, of being a democratic society, um, of uh, not having military patrolling in our streets, of not having an excessive check uh, by police, by border, by whatever, is for society itself to increase its awareness, its readiness to respond in case something happens. And for me, that is really uh, a big, a big issue because it is the, the only uh, way in which a democratic society can react to the increased new threat environment. Because if we keep the military in the street, that will in fact be um, a, a significant change of our society. And so we have lost uh, in our fight against terrorism.